Hi folks, Marina Stroud here. I am your Tradesmith product education lead. Thanks for joining us today and for letting us be a part of your educational journey. Please take some time to review our previously recorded bootcamp webinars found within your help menu. You'll see that the bootcamp lessons are organized into beginner and intermediate lessons. The beginner bootcamps are hosted every Tuesday at 1 p.m and the intermediate boot camps are hosted every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern unless otherwise directed. The webinars are intended to educate members across all Tradesmith products. As I've mentioned, our boot camps are fluid and I may make some changes as we go. In response to many requests, I am now including the webinar Q&A at the conclusion of each presentation. The webinar Q&A is live and uncut and I don't know what questions will be posed. This is helpful because, you know, if you have a question, another member may have the same question. I wanna educate our newbies and those that have been with us for some time. If you're new, check out the beginner level webinars and join the intermediate lessons when you feel up to it. Attending live will provide a more interactive one-on-one -on -one platform where your questions are answered on the spot. The beginner and intermediate webinar registration links can be found within each of their respective bootcamp folders and each registration page will include a description of the lesson and any specific features and or tradesmith products covered. All right, let's go ahead and check out today's topics. We're going to continue our discussion on alerts. However, today's focus will be crypto alerts. You may have noticed that there is more than one way to add alerts to your positions. I'm gonna show you the easiest and quickest way to add the same alert to multiple crypto assets. You can also add more than one alert to your positions. For example, if you invest in cryptocurrencies that are currently in the health indicator red zone, you can continue to track their health with the health indicator and implement an alternative exit strategy. I'll show you how to do this when we get to the website. You have access to the same equity alerts with the exception of the fundamental alerts. However, the key difference to point out is that the crypto alerts can be established based on intraday pricing. This provides you with more timely exits especially when it comes to managing your more volatile crypto assets. Speaking of volatile crypto assets, have you checked out the crypto markets? According to our indicators, the crypto markets are not in a healthy condition. And this makes it even more imperative to have your exit strategies in place. If you wanna add an alert that is currently not available within your list of alert templates, I'll show you how to create your own alert templates. We'll conclude our discussion with a review of your alert settings so that you can adjust your programs based on your need. As always, let's get that disclaimer out of the way, folks. Whoops, where are you? There you are. <laughs> the information we present today and in upcoming tutorials is intended for educational purposes only. We're not financial advisors and cannot provide any individualized advice or recommendations. We are recording today's presentation, so if you miss something, don't worry about it, folks. You'll be able to go back and rewatch it at your convenience. Please try to keep your questions during the webinar pertaining to today's topic. I'll open the floor to all general questions at the end of the presentation. Great, let's get started. As you saw earlier, we're gonna check out the current crypto market review based on our indicators and algorithms. So according to our system, there is a lot of red going on in the crypto markets right now. Of all the cryptocurrencies that we're tracking, which is approximately 13,000, around 70% are in the health indicator red zone. Now you don't have to know much about our indicators to see that the crypto markets are not in a healthy state. This line graph that you see on the left corresponds to all cryptocurrencies. 
and it tells us what percentage of the 13,000 cryptos that we track qualified for our algorithms. Only 1.85% qualified, this is as of yesterday, February 7, 2022. Now we would like to see that the thresh, a threshold of 20% or greater. That's where you see that red line on that graph. Clearly we're not even close to that 20% threshold. Now this, is, this pertains to crypto ideas by Tradesmith, but I just wanted to do a, a quick, quick down and dirty on the crypto market review based on the crypto ideas by Tradesmith so that you can see how imperative, imperative it is at this time to really get your exit strategies in place for your crypto assets. Okay, so let's head to the website. One moment, please. All right, I'm already logged into my Tradesmith Finance account. Just as a reminder, you will log into your account via finance.tradesmith.com, no matter which product subscription you hold. Also, I have access to the full suite of Tradesmith products with my Platinum subscription, so your site may look different than mine. Under the green help menu while we're here, you can access additional educational resources. You'll see the Tradesmith Bootcamp webinars organized based on beginner and intermediate lessons. We have an intermediate lesson coming up this Thursday, so I can click to expand the contents of that folder. And at the very top there, you'll see the webinar sign up link. I'll go ahead and click that. And a separate internet tab will pop up to take us to the registration page. So we'll be tackling the My Gurus page, reviewing your newsletters and how you can best utilize our system to help you track your newsletters. Now you have the best of both worlds, folks. You have your fundamentally sound newsletters and our technicals. So let's learn how we can apply both. To join us, please type in your first name, last name, and email address and you'll hit the register button below. I say, even if you can't make it live, go ahead and register. That way we'll send you the webinar replay link. And all are welcome to attend. All right, let's jump back to the site. As you know, Tradesmith is a big proponent of continued education, and we wanna do everything we can to help you along the way. Aside from the educational webinars and editorials, we also provide you with a concierge service. And our concierge program allows you to set up a one-on-one -on -one phone appointment with a knowledgeable agent where they can review your questions or provide you with a product walkthrough. So to set up your concierge appointment, you expand the contact customer success menu here at the top and select schedule a concierge appointment. You'll see another internet tab is popping up for us and this will take you to the concierge scheduling program. Now, if you've never registered for a concierge appointment, you're gonna need to create an account by selecting this register button at the top right. Now, this is gonna be a separate login from your Tradesmith Finance account. If you've already created an account to book a concierge appointment, you'll simply click the login button here at the top right. This next button here at the bottom right just simply takes you to the red or the login page. So please be sure to register if this is your first time booking an appointment. When you're booking your appointments, make sure that you specify your time zones, folks, so that you don't miss your appointments. All right, going back to the site, if you're a Platinum member, you can go to your Platinum page located at the top navigational header. And at the very top right, you'll have your own dedicated platinum email and phone support. And there's a button there that allows you to book your appointments. Okay, let's get started with today's lesson. For today's lesson, I created a portfolio with the cryptocurrencies that make up the cryptocurrencies index or the CCI 30. The CCI 30, if you're not familiar, tracks 30 top cryptocurrencies based on market capitalization. 
So I'm going to go to my portfolios. If you'd like to follow along, please select your portfolio from the Manage tab. And I believe this is a watch only I created. There it is, CCI30. Once you select your portfolio, the site will direct you to the Positions tab where you can review your holdings. Now, before you add your alerts, you need to consider your exit strategy. Your crypto exit strategies may differ from your equity exit strategies. Typically, your crypto portfolio will be more volatile than your stocks portfolio. And you may want to account for this additional volatility in your crypto exit strategies. If you're conservative, you may want to follow our health indicator. With that said, you may not be trading many cryptos at this time. As you can see, of all the CCI30 cryptos, only one is in the health indicator green zone. And that's this uh, one here at the top of the list. It's a Bitcoin pegged token that will be traded on Binance and proposed for trading on Binance DEX. All other cryptocurrencies, if I scroll down, there's 30 total. All of the other cryptos within the CCI 30 or the cryptocurrencies index are in the red zone. So we will definitely need to be focusing on alternative exit strategies. For cryptocurrencies, we need 150 trading days to be able to determine the health status and approximately 17 days of historical price data to determine the volatility quotient. If the crypto asset doesn't have the necessary 150 trading days, we do display a gray NA within that health status column. So within these little buttons, it would be gray and it would say NA. And if we don't have the necessary 17 days of trading data, we're going to display a general 25% BQ. It doesn't appear that this would be the case, right, for the cryptocurrencies index, which is tracking the 30 top cryptocurrencies based on market capitalization. Now let's, let's discuss our exit strategies. Again, the more conservative approach would be to use the health indicator as your exit strategy. This means that you would only invest in cryptos that are in the green zone and exit your cryptos if they hit the red zone. Please keep in mind that the health indicator is based on latest close prices. Now you might be saying that the crypto markets are 24 seven, so how are we obtaining latest close prices? Well, unlike the equity market, the cryptocurrency is open 24 seven across a growing number of exchanges. We are basing our latest close prices for each crypto asset from midnight UTC or 7 p.m. Eastern or 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Daylight Savings Time. <clears throat> Typically with the health indicator, you'd be holding your crypto assets for approximately three to six months. If you're a shorter term crypto trader, you may benefit from our intraday alerts. Our intraday alerts are based on our latest prices, which we update every 30 minutes. In this case, you can assign all your crypto assets a VQ% percent trailing stop based on intraday pricing. You can also add a percentage trailing stop if you'd like to tighten your stops or provide the crypto more wiggle room. Although we don't have a maximum trailing stop for your crypto assets, you can determine what amount of risk you're willing to take. You can access or you can assess the normal VQ of any given crypto asset. So for example, let's, let's continue to review this Bitcoin peg token. You can see it has a VQ of approximately 66%. Now you may not want price to drop by 66% before you're out of the trade. You may wanna use a tighter stop loss based on your risk tolerance. 
at least the VQ gives you a good idea of the asset's normal movement. You'll decide, you'll need to decide, you know, which strategy is going to work best for your needs and investment style. For our scenario, I'm going to show you how to add a VQ% percent trailing stop loss based on intraday pricing and will enable the health indicator system alerts so that you can stay in the loop on any health and trend changes for your crypto assets. Okay, so let's set it and forget it. From the positions tab, you can select your positions with these selection boxes that are located to the far left of each position. You're gonna see a green checkbox once the ticker is checked. To select all of your positions, click the top selection box. All right, you can see here at the very bottom left, all 30 items are selected. At the very bottom left, you'll notice an edit menu that has popped up for us. We'll go ahead and select the add alert button. You're then gonna see this window that pops up to view your list of alert templates. Now keep in mind your alert temp templates may differ than mine. I'll show you how we're gonna create alert templates in a little bit. I'll go ahead and select the VQ trailing stop and set OK. Now, once you add the VQ percent trailing stop or any other alert template, you're gonna notice the status column reflects this event. So let me highlight where we're looking at right here. Here's the status column. Let's go ahead and review the status column and its bells. Let me go ahead and pull up the webinar script so we can take a look at this together. If you see a solid black bell that indicates that an active alert has been assigned, the number to the right of the bell indicates the number of alerts that have been assigned to that position. If you see a purple bell, this indicates that the assigned alert has been triggered. If you see a white bell with a slash and a zero, that indicates that no alerts are assigned to the position. The purple bells will show you whether any of the alerts you have in place are triggered. Now the health indicator doesn't correspond to these alert bells that you're looking at within the status column. So let me jump back to the site. These bells right here under the status column do not correspond with the health indicator. The health indicator is a system alert that you assign globally across your portfolios. So there's no need to assign individual crypto assets the health indicator. If the health indicator is your primary exit strategy and you're not assigning your crypto assets any other additional alerts like the VQ percent trailing stop, a percentage trailing stop, or a hard stop, et cetera, you're gonna see a white bell with a slash and a zero. But this doesn't mean that the health indicator isn't working behind the scenes to continually track the health of your positions. The difference is how you're assigning your alerts. The health indicator, among other system alerts, which we will review later, are assigned within your program settings. All other alerts are assigned within either the positions tab, which is where we assigned ours, the alerts tab, or the position card page for any security. So again, when I selected all of these positions and I went to add alert, you're gonna notice the health indicator is not here. We do not assign the health indicator individually. The health indicator will be assigned globally across your portfolios and newsletters within your program settings. And again, we'll get to that at the end of our discussion. So now that I have shown you how to quickly add your VQ% trailing stop or any other 
alert templates from the positions tab, I want to review an important question. Are the VQ trailing stops we just assigned based on latest closed prices, which are pulled from midnight UTC, or latest prices, which update 30, every 30 minutes? The alert templates that you are assigning from the positions tab, again, we went, selected the positions, add alerts. The alerts that you're assigning here from your list of alert templates are based on latest closed prices that we're obtaining for your cryptos at midnight UTC. They are not based on intraday pricing, which we update every 30 minutes. If you want, to assign your cryptos a VQ% percent trailing stop or other alert based on latest prices, you're going to need to assign the alert to each individual position from its position card page. Let me show you. We're going to continue working with this Bitcoin PEG token. I'll click on the ticker symbol and it takes us straight to the crypto assets position card page where you can review the current indicators and some other information. There's the chart. We're going to go to the alerts tab to add our alert. So once you click on the alerts tab, you're going to see there's our VQ% percent trailing stop that we assign. To edit or delete the alert, you can click on this blue uh, drop-down triangle. You'll see there's edit and delete. We're going to, instead of deleting and adding a new one, let's just go ahead and edit the alert. So I'm going to hit edit. And from here, you want to select show notification settings. There's a link here. So it gives you some information. There's the VQ. Below, you can see show notification settings. I'm going to click that link. And you can see that it is based on latest close prices. If you forget what the difference is between latest close and latest price, you can hover your mouse over this little informational bubble just above, and it tells you exactly where we're pulling these prices from. I want to go ahead and change this to latest price. Now, unfortunately, you're going to need to adjust this for each position. Currently, there is no option for creating an alert template such as a VQ% percent trailing stop or percentage trailing stop based on intraday prices. I'll go ahead and hit save. Now, once you have updated the alert, you're going to see now to the right, it reads intraday. So remember, you want to look for it to say intraday. Now, to more easily update our VQ% percent trailing stops, because we've got quite a few now, right, to update here, you can take a look at the top right, right here, and you can see the next crypto in line. So you'll see uh, the previous. We can go previous. We can hit next. If you want to go back to the positions, you can click on the name of the portfolio here in the center. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to adjust the alerts one more time. So I'm going to click on the next ticker, which is cake. And as soon as that pulls up, we're going to go back to our alerts tab. Let me erase that there. Oh, site is definitely a little slow today. Come on. It always does this when we're live. <laughs> it's like it knows. Oh, I know Marina is hosting a live webinar right at the moment. Let's take our sweet time. There we go. All right, so we're under alerts. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that blue drop down triangle and we'll select edit. Now this time I want to show you that you can change it if you didn't want a VQ% percent trailing stop. Maybe you wanted to 
um, you know, set up a, a tighter stop or maybe even give it a little bit more wiggle room, you can. You can click on custom and I'll go ahead and we'll just put in 35. We'll do a little bit of a tighter stop. And again, we wanna make sure that it's set to latest price. If we want those intraday alerts, so I'm gonna click show notification settings and toggle it from latest close to latest price. Then I'll go ahead and hit save. There we go. So I'll go back to the top of the page and I'll probably go to the next ticker, which is Dogecoin. So I can click Doge and continue to edit my alerts. Again, you go to the alerts tab, click that blue triangle, hit edit, under show notification settings, make sure it reads latest price. And if you forget the difference between the two, check out that little informational bubble there that pops up that lets you know where we're pulling these prices from. So let's go ahead and just recap what we've learned so far. I've shown you how to quickly add your alert templates from the positions tab. This is great, but we encountered that these alert templates are by default based on latest close prices. The latest close prices are based on the crypto prices that we're pulling from midnight UTC. For alerts based on intraday prices, you need to add these alerts individually from the alerts tab where we are right now. So far, I've shown you how to add your trailing stops However, there are many other alerts that you can utilize as well. So let me go ahead and hit cancel here. For example, I'll hit add alert just to pull up the alerts that are available for you. If I go to, so we've talked about trailing stops, right? VQ and uh, custom percentage trailing stops. For example, if we go now to price, you can see all of the available price alerts at your disposal. Now, the 2VQ alert, folks, this is not an exit strategy. The 2VQ approach allows you to add to your winning positions for those that have moved up two times their listed VQ. But you have the same capabilities with the latest price for these other alerts right here. So for example, if we want to do a percentage gain or loss, here you can toggle to loss or gain. Gain is above, um, you can specify that percentage and you'll click show notification settings. It appears that it's defaulted to latest price, which is good if that's what you want, the intraday alerts. But you know what, double check just to make sure. There's a fixed price above or below and it appears also be also to be defaulted to intraday pricing. You can also do a dollar gain or loss right here. Again, I'll always double check, click show notification settings and confirm that it's set to latest price. Now we don't have time to review all of the available alerts, but I did create a document that lists all available alerts with their definitions. And I've included a link to access this document within today's presentation. Before we discuss the alert templates and your system alerts, let's briefly review the alerts tab. So to go back to your portfolio, you can go to my portfolios at the top navigational header. Then from the manage tab, you select your portfolio. Or here at the very top right, we can just click on our portfolio. So I'll click CCI 30, and it should take us back to the positions tab where we left off. Let's jump to the alerts tab. You're gonna see that it looks similar to the positions tab. However, the information is specific to the alerts that are assigned to the positions. Let's just go over some of these columns here. The alert state column tells you the name or the current state of the alert. Days trigger will let you know how many consecutive days an alert has been triggered. The alert description column will tell you what alert has been assigned to your position. And 
Let me scroll down here just a bit. You'll notice here, here is our VQ. You'll see it's different from our other VQ trailing stops because it's intraday. So look out for that intraday right there. And there's the 35% trailing stop that we adjusted for pancake, pancake swap. All right. The, let me scroll here to the far right. We've got some additional columns that I want to point out for you. Very important, we have the trigger price, which is the stop price for the assigned alert. Now you may want to also add the latest close price and keep these side by side so you can see how far away or how close the price is to being stopped out. You can also adjust your alert views, just like you can with your position views. Right now, the default I have here is uh, enabled. I can click this white edit pencil and I can open up my alert views. So you can adjust the columns of information that you're viewing within your alerts tab. To move any columns, you can with your mouse, left click and hold and drag. You'll see this little ghost box kind of moves along and you can then let it go wherever you want the column to sit. So again, with the left mouse key, you click it and hold it and you drag it to the left or to the right in between two columns and let it go. You can also create your own views. So you'll see there's an add view button here at the very top right. So you can create a, another alert view that you'd like. All right, let me just go ahead and hit cancel. From the alerts tab, you can also add, edit, and delete alerts. To delete multiple alerts, you can come in here and select the uh, alert by clicking on the selection boxes to the very far left and at the very bottom, you can hit delete. If you select that top selection box, you can delete all alerts that we've just added. You can also delete each individual alert with this blue triangle. So you can also edit and delete the alerts as well. Now be careful uh, and ensure that you're on the alerts tab before you hit delete because you don't wanna accidentally delete any positions. So just make sure here at the very top of the site, you're in the alerts tab. The um, change TS, so let me pull this up here. You'll notice that when I selected cake or pancake swap here, not only do I have a delete button, but I also have a change trailing stop percentage button. Now this allows me to change the percentage that I'm using for my trailing stops. However, you cannot change a VQ percent trailing stop to a custom percentage trailing stop. I can edit pancake swap here because I've added a 35% trailing stop. I can change that custom percentage trailing stop. However, if I select, for example, a VQ percent trailing stop, you'll see that I don't have the option to change it from a VQ to a custom. In that case, I would have to come here and hit edit. Then I can select custom and make my adjustments here. Okay. To add our alert, we can also hit this uh, green add alert button. You'll see that it just confirms the portfolio. Then I have to select the position. So I'll just go with Pancake swap here, just to make everyone hungry and think of pancakes. We'll hit next. <laughs> You'll see that this method just simply takes us back to the position card page. And you can go to the alerts tab here and you can add additional alerts as well. You can even apply any alert template that you create. More on this in just a moment. Actually, the moment is now. So let's talk about your alert templates. To access your alert templates, 
you're going to click on more, this more navigational drop down menu, and select alert templates. Now keep in mind, again, your alert templates may vary from mine. From the alert templates tab of the templates page, click on the green add template button. And then you're going to see here on the far left, all of your, all of the available alerts that can be added to your list of alert templates. So we're going to review the steps together. So in the in step one you're going to select your alert type all right i've got it selected in step two you're going to set your parameters so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a 50 percent trailing stop um, then step three you'll click add alert you'll see it then listed at the bottom left of your site in step four, we name our alert. So I'll just type in 50% trailing stop. Now you wanna be specific when you're naming your alert because this is the only reference that you have to remember the parameters of your alert template. Then you would hit the green save button. I believe I already have this created, so I'm just gonna hit cancel. Now, here's some more bad news, unfortunately. <laughs> It's not bad news, but I just want you to understand the limitations. You're not going to be able to add um, or create template alerts based on intraday or intraday prices. So keep in mind that the alert templates will be based on latest closed prices and not latest prices. Again, if you want your crypto alerts to be based on latest prices, you must add the alerts to each individual position from the position card page. With this, you can also add more than one alert, which is, is, is pretty neat. So for example, if you wanna be alerted when a crypto drops by 10% or tw and 20%, you can add a 10% and 20% loss alert template. You can also create a 20 or a 10% and a 20% gain alert template. So I have it already created. Let me go ahead and delete and I'll show you how I did this. So I hit add template. I went to price. And then this one is located under uh, percentage gain or loss. So you can, you can create it whether you want to be alerted on a gain or a loss. I can do loss here and the first portion, a 10%. I'll hit add alert. Let's scroll down. There it is. Now let's do the 20% portion. So I simply change this 10% to 20%. Hit add alert once again. Now I've got both portions of this alert. Now I can save it. 10% and 20% loss, and then hit save. It's as simple as that. Now, when I go back to the positions tab, I can add this as a templated alert. So if I go to my portfolios, I can select, here's our CCI 30, and I'll just select one here, add alert. Now I have my 10% and 20% loss alert. So you can add more than one alert, folks. All right, so now let's review our system alerts. If the health indicator is your primary exit strategy, you'll want to make sure that the health indicator is enabled within your system alerts. Your system alerts can be found within your program settings. So let me show you. To access your program settings, click on your name drop down menu here at the very top right and select settings. Now we're going to go to the alerts program settings. So here on the left, you'll see alerts. And we'll start reviewing our features here. And we'll start with the automatic alert creation feature. Now, Tradesmith can automatically create alerts on new positions 
as they're detected in your brokerage account. This is enabled for stocks and options. Since this feature is based on portfolio synchronization, it does not apply to cryptos, folks. Tradesmith is unable to import your crypto wallets and or exchanges at this time. Currently, we are only able to support Robinhood and eToro exchanges, so it's very limited at this point. Let's take a look at our system alerts. Now, our development team is working on the synchronization for cryptos. Um, however, at this time, it's limited. So Robinhood and eToro are what we are able to support at this moment. Let's go ahead and check out the system alerts. There's a few here. So there's the health indicator. You have an early entry signal, new high profit, stock rating updates. Let me go ahead and grab my little highlighter. You have the health indicator. Here's our early entry signal, new high profit, and stock rating updates. Let's take a look at each one together. So the entry signal pertains to the health indicators entry signal. And if you want to be alerted when any asset or security goes from red to green or triggers a new health indicator entry signal, you wanna make sure that this is checked, either for your investment portfolios, your watch only portfolios, uh, your active newsletters if you'd like, and now um, Billionaires Club. This doesn't pertain to cryptos though. Uh, but if you do have access to the Billionaires Club, this is a newer feature that we have implemented. The early entry signal will provide you with an aggressive entry when a crypto is still in the health indicator red zone. Think of this like a preemptive strike. You're getting into the trade before the health indicator triggers a green light. It uses part of the health indicator formula. However, it only needs to detect a slight uptrend. So price will have bounced at least one times its current VQ and is above our smart moving average, which is our trend indicator. That's that blue dashed line that you see on the charts. If you are using the early entry signal as your entry into a position, as opposed to the health indicator, you could use the VQ% percent trailing stop as your exit strategy. You can even um, set it up as an intraday alert if you want. When the crypto triggers a new health indicator green zone, you do have the option of switching to the health indicator or you stick with the VQ percent trailing stop intraday if you want intraday alerts. Remember, the health indicator is based on latest close prices. It cannot be set up as an intraday alert. Then we have our health indicator. And here it pertains to our green, yellow, red light system. You can enable it across all of your investment, watch only newsletters as well. With the, with the newsletters here, let's say you have some crypto newsletters, you don't need to create a, a newsletter watch list to track the health of your newsletters. You can just check these boxes right here if you wanna track any health changes for your newsletters. And it's broken up in the different zones, right? Green zone, yellow zone uptrend, yellow zone side trend, downtrend, and the red zone. This next one here is one of my favorites. I love getting this alert more than I think any of the other alerts, I think, is this new high profit. Because this one lets you know when a new high close has been detected since you entered the trade. So this one means you are making money. New higher highs means cha-ching, cha-ching, money in my pocket. <laughs> then we have our stock rating updates. This pertains to ratings by Tradesmith. It doesn't pertain to the cryptos. So this is only for long equities. Alrighty, folks. That's a wrap on today's lesson. 
let's go ahead and uh, recap here before we be begin our Q&A. Today, I showed you how to add and manage your crypto alerts. Again, the quickest way was from the positions tab. So we selected our portfolio and from the positions tab, you can select all your positions, hit add alert and find your alert template. This is great. However, we encountered that these alert templates default based on latest close prices. Latest close prices are obtained from midnight UTC. If you want to add alerts that are based on intraday prices, which we update every 30 minutes, you need to add the alert. So we'll click the ticker. You need to add the alert from the position card page. You'll go to the alerts tab. And you can, if you've already added the alert, you can simply edit the alert. If you want to change it from a VQ to custom, you can. But under show notification settings, that's where you toggle it to latest price. If you forget what the differences are, hover over that informational bubble. Although we don't have a maximum trailing stop recommendation for your cryptos, you can choose to set a percentage trailing stop or other exit strategy based on your own risk tolerance. I also showed you how to create your alert templates, but again, keep in mind that any alert template you create is based on latest close prices. If you want crypto alerts based on latest prices, you've got to come here. You've got to come to the position card page and assign them individually. We then ended our discussion on our system alert. So to access your system alerts, you've got to head to your program settings. Click on your name at the top right, go to settings, and here on the left, we'll go to alerts. If we scroll down, we can bump into our system alerts. The health indicator is a system alert. If the health indicator is your primary exit strategy, please make sure you've got these set up properly. Even if the health indicator is not your primary exit strategy, which may be the case after you've learned a little bit more about how our alerts work for your cryptos, you can still enable it and stay in the loop on any health and trend changes to your crypto assets. Once your alerts are set, you can relax knowing that the system will notify you when it's time to act. All right, for those of you that have to get going, let's uh, pull up our contact us and then we'll stick around for a Q&A. One moment. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please contact our dedicated customer success team. This Thursday, we will host an intermediate bootcamp lesson on the My Gurus page. Tradesmith makes it easy to track and manage your newsletter recommendations. Now you can marry both the fundamentals from your newsletters and the Tradesmith indicators to find the best investment opportunities. This lesson applies to all Tradesmith products. However, there are certain restrictions that apply when we're looking at these tabs and we'll go through that together. Please feel free to register even if you can't make it. We'll send you the webinar recording if you register to attend. Thanks again for joining us and for letting us be a part of your educational journey. Until next time, bye. All righty, folks, we are back. Are the questions, Kristen? All right. Can everyone see me? Oh, I was on mute. Oh, the question. Oh, you were on mute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can look down like, does she hear me? But I see my mouth moving. <laughs> Um, That's all right. Yeah. There we yeah, go. We, all right. Yeah. So some questions um, you already answered, but I mean, we can always bring them up. But a sure. lot of people were kind of confused with the 10, 10 and 20% below or above alert that you created, okay. created. And if you could just go over that a little bit more, because yeah. Raymond um, is the one that brought it up and a few other points. Um, because he thinks um, it sh we said above, um, 
and labeled it as a loss in our description, but he thinks maybe it should be below, but I think it go either way. So if you could maybe go over that. Yeah, sure. Let's take a look. So we'll go ahead and jump back to the site. All right. So to go through your templates, we'll hit more and then alert templates. And so we want to look at, now I showed the example of a 10% a and 20% loss because I wanted to show you that you can add more than one alert to each template. So I'll go add alert and we'll go to price. And the one that we're examining here is you can be alerted. Um, this alert monitors a specific percentage gain or loss. So you set the parameters. So you can toggle this from a loss. So if um, price drops, by whatever percent I set, um, then it's going to alert me. So I set this up as a loss, and then the first parameter was the 10% and hit add. Then again, loss, then I hit the 20% and hit add. And you'll see both of these are here, right? So what is the specific question on that alert? By the way, so, too, we can yeah. go ahead. Um, he said, so the 10 and 20% um, parameter setting above and labeling, labeling it a loss in, a, in the alert description. And he said, there's a link that you just showed. Could you hit on that link? I just asked him which link. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this one? Let me ask him. I'm pulling up the definitions guide that we have for this alert. So, so this percentage gain or loss notifies you when the position has moved a certain percentage above or below um, your entry price. Okay, he replied, so, he said the original 10 and 20% link you set up, I guess in the actual webinar. Oh. Is it incorrect in my script or the original one? I'm getting some clarification. In the script, I say, if you want to be alerted when a crypto drops by 10% or 20%, you can add a 10% or 20% loss. You can also create it as a gain. I think my screenshots are correct. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, the one that I deleted initially i'm not sure but um in either case we can see um raymond if you have any additional questions let us know yeah and okay. then sandy yeah sandy said um which i confirmed was the health alert but can you confirm when when they would get an alert when it enters a yellow or red which is the health which basically works kind of basically the same as equities Okay, yeah, exactly. So if we go to our settings here at the top right, go to alerts. With your system alerts, um, here's our health indicator. You can adjust how you're notified based on any of these health changes. So you have the green zone, yellow zone uptrend, yellow zone side trend, yellow zone downtrend, and the red zone. For example, if I you know, thought I was getting too many emails and I wasn't too concerned about the yellow zone side trend or, you know, any of the, any particular one I didn't care to be alerted on, I can uncheck it. Now, I'm a stickler. I like a lot of, as much information as possible, so I wouldn't do this, but you have the option to do this. So anytime, because I have all of these checked, You'll see here, ah, get out of their webcam. This webcam pops up at the, the worst places here. <laughs> <laughs> it blocked me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so because I have all of these checked, anytime it changes health or state, I'm gonna be notified. So if it's in the green zone and it goes into the yellow zone, but still trending up, I'll be notified. If it goes back into the green zone, I'm gonna be notified. If it goes from the green zone uh, to yellow zone side trend, I'm gonna be notified. 
If it changes from yellow zone side trend to yellow zone downtrend, I'm going to be alerted. Hopefully it comes back up, but if it continues to drop and it hits the red zone, I'm going to be alerted. So I'll be alerted on any uh, state change. This, this goes for your equities and for your cryptos. Um, the thing is that with the, with the cryptos, you may want to be alerted based on intraday pricing, especially given um, you know, today's current crypto market outlook. And the thing with the health indicator is that it doesn't operate based on intraday prices. So you may still want to have these enabled just so you can get uh, an idea of uh, or stay in the loop on the health changes of your cryptos. But perhaps for the exit strategy, you may utilize the intraday alerts, whether it's a VQ percent trailing stop or a percentage trailing stop or any other alert that, that you have access to. Those can be intraday. Okay, perfect. Um, we got a question from Paul. I've been asking, do we track NFTs, which is I think is non-fungible tokens? Tokens, yeah. yeah. No, we do not. Uh, we do not. I don't know um, if that's something that we're going to do in the future. Um, but I'll, all I can say is that we don't at this time. I know some of the newsletters have um, NFTs in them, but we'll see. It'll show like NFT, but it'll be grayed out. We won't be able to support it at this time. Great Perfect. question. Yeah, I know. Um, we did get a few about, they were kind of confused how we are doing like a latest close when cryptos open 24 seven. And so if you could just go over that again, how, you know, we update it based on. Um, right, exactly. So um, as we have uh, learned here with our, we'll go back to our CCI 30. Uh, and you're right. I mean, the crypto markets are tw open 24 seven. How are you pulling the latest close price? Well, we have decided to pull a latest close, and I put air quotations. <laughs> we have decided to pull a latest close price from midnight UTC. So when I go to add or edit, you can see this um, right here. When you're looking at the notification settings, um, the latest close represents the investments or the, the price that we're pulling for that crypto uh, midnight UTC, 7 p.m. Eastern or 8 p.m. Eastern. I believe that's daylight savings time. Yeah. Um, the intraday alerts are updated every 30 minutes. All right. Good question. Okay. Then mm -hmm. this this is a good question too. The CCI 30 is that automatically updated, and if so, do new what uh, new coins come on there like weekly daily that's a great question so i included a link to the cci 30 uh the website but um i'll show it here i'll pull up my uh bookmarks i know don't look i have a lot here <laughs> uh cci 30 i've got to get them organized a little bit <laughs> but i included the link it's pretty simple it's just cci 30.com here, it, it's it's a nice uh, site here. It tells you how uh, the CCI 30 is determined. You know, they're looking at the 30 largest cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. Um, and you can scroll down here, gives you, there's a chart of the CCI 30. You can see where, I would, I think of the CCI 30 like the S&P 500 for cryptos. You know, gives you a, uh, a good I a good reference for the mar the crypto markets and that's why we include it within our crypto market outlook but you can see here some index real-time information and you'll see the constituents which they update here now to create this portfolio what I did is I went to the screener tool so I went to so I'm jumping back to the site I went to uh, invest at the top navigational header. I went to screener. I hit new screener. And all I did, the only filter I utilized is the Tradesmith baskets. We have a lot of crypto related baskets right here. 
I just selected the CCI 30 and that's it, no other filter. And then I hit run screener and that provided me with the 30 cryptocurrencies that make up the CCI 30. So from here, all I did is I selected those 30 crypto assets and I created a, a new portfolio. And that's, um, that's how I created that CCI 30 watch list portfolio for us to review today. Nice. Um, so I think this is the last question. It kind of goes back with the 10, 20%. But um, so Scott says he's a little confused on the 10, 20% loss alert. If you set two alerts, one for 10% and a second one for 20%, would you receive two alerts? Um, or one as it passes through the 10% and another when it passes through 20%? You would receive uh, one alert. So if it hits the 10%, you're essentially, it's a two for one. So instead of, so this is, this is what you're doing folks. Okay, let me just show you what I'm doing here. This is why you can do it as a one shot deal. So you don't have to do each alert separately. So for example, let's say, I want to be alerted when Tezos here drops 10% and then also 20%. So as soon as this pulls up here, let me show you what this is look like, the practicality of this alert. And this is just this alert. I mean, it could be, this was just one example, folks, but if I hit add alert and went to price, I can do a percentage loss, 10%. I can make sure it's also latest price, hit add alert, but I don't have the 20% portion of it, right? So now I have to go back to alerts, then I have to go here, uh, loss, then I have to, it's, a, it's two separate alerts, right? So I have two separate alerts. Oops, I did one wrong. Eh. Hang on. Okay, so I have, these are two separate alerts, right? So if the 10% triggers, I'm gonna receive an alert, right? If can price continues to drop and then I have a 20% loss, then I'm going to get an alert. The template just kind of consolidates this as one, but you're still only gonna be alerted if the 10% triggers, right? When the 20% triggers, then you'll be alerted. So I can go to alert templates and I can have it as one. So I don't have to create two separate alerts. Does that make sense, folks? It's just a it's just a, a way to make it a, a a two for one. It's like a two for one special instead of creating separate alerts. Now again, you may not do this because it's not based on intraday prices, and you may just do that individually within the position card page. But um, instead of setting up each alert separately, you can make it as a as a combo deal. It's like a combo meal, right? You're going through fast food and you're getting your combo meal. <laughs> Instead of buying your fries and your drink and your burger separate, you're buying it as a combo meal. That's all that is. Think of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what um, Raymond was saying that um, you had gain selected. So that's what kind of caused the confusion, not loss. So ah, gotcha. So <laughs> I I mixed it up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, like Raymond. <laughs> um, and then, uh, hold on. And then some. Uh, Sandra said, still not clear if you get two alerts or just one. And again, it's one alert. Right. It would just. It, it depends on what triggers. If if price drops by ten percent, you're going to get the ten percent portion of that alert. You know, I I probably should do a little test on this because I'm not sure what the naming convention would come in as. So, um, cause it may read, I'll have to see, I've never done this folks. Um, so I'm not sure like how the name would come in. It would be the name of your alert. 
right? 10 and 20% loss. For practicalities, you may not set this up this way. Um, I don't know, I've never done this type of an alert, so I'm not sure how it would come in. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna guinea pig this. So I'm gonna test this out, okay? I'm gonna add this alert to every single one of these. And I'm gonna let you know. So I'll let you know how it comes in. All right? You'll have to remind me on the next round. But um, what I can do is, uh, when I update this lesson for the next round, I'll make sure you know I include that information within our next presentation so I'm ahead of the game and I'll know exactly how that how that works. Okay. And this is a good question. To get the CCI 30, you, do you have to have a crypto product even if you have the screener? So say you have the screener, um, are you able to screen do the CCI 30 without crypto product? Unfortunately not. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kristen, but I believe with the, the screener is available to members that have ideas products. So mm -hmm. either ideas by Tradesmith, Trade uh, crypto ideas and right trade 360 because you have trade stops and ideas yeah but you have to have crypto ideas to be able to access the screener right. but you can come to the cci 30 if you don't have it don't worry you can come to the cci 30 here and it will give you a current listing of all the cci 30 cryptocurrencies Okay. I don't know if we know this or not. Daniel said it's Coinbase, like the CCI 30. Do we know? Uh, Coinbase is Coinbase. It's Coinbase, the wallet slash exchange. Yeah. That's what he's so um, Coinbase um, is not a actual token or a coin that I know of, but it is a wallet and exchange in which you can you can set up to uh, transfer your um, your money so that you can um, trade and exchange cryptocurrencies. Perfect. <laughs> um, um, and I had, a, I just closed my, um, that reminds me. So I, and I don't know if anyone's had this situation and I'm not sure if this is just with Coinbase or in general with cryptocurrencies and, and by my, no means am I an expert, but I had a little a little uh, Coinbase account and I was buying Bitcoin, right? Like just periodically buying Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is, is ter doing terrible right now. Um, we can go here to the site. Um, and by the way, you have to type it in I don't know if it comes up as the in the menu, just FYI. But so Bitcoin is is doing terrible and I lost a lot of money on it and I was like, "Oh, well, I'll just I'll just keep buying and buying." But um I finally decided, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm going to get out. So I closed my my position. I lost about 900 bucks and I was like, "You know what? That's fine. I'm back to where I started." <laughs> <laughs> Back to the amount of money I started with. So I got up to 1800 bucks and I lost, you know, I lost quite a bit, but it is what it is. That was my, my first try at Bitcoin. Uh, so then I, I went to transfer the money back to my bank account and I got an email saying that I won't have the money in my account until the end of this month. So I was kind of baffled at, as to why it takes so long. But apparently it takes it can take days for crypto transactions to go through. And uh, so I'm new to this, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be investing in the crypto markets right now. I think I'm taking a breather, folks, on the crypto yeah, okay. markets. Because yeah. we thought Bitcoin is going to do so well. I know getting in, buying more. Mm -hmm. but, you know, you're not alone. I lost you. <laughs> Taxes, I I don't think I'm making an I don't think I made enough to even claim or claim any taxes. I think you have to what make uh 
How much does anyone know how much you have to be claiming and like how much income you have to have for or make with the cryptos to be taxed? I thought it was at least 15,000. Yeah, and I read. But I could be IRS. wrong. Yeah, exactly. The IRS is coming for you know, crypto. <laughs> Uncle like, Sam wants this. it all. Yeah. Even my $900? <laughs> <ring? laughs> Probably. Well, I did make, yeah, I did make 1800 and then now I'm down to about 900 Yes? Okay. Well, I'll have to find out. Um, I imagine I'd have to go to um, Coinbase and see if they provide me with any uh, tax forms that I need to get to my CPA, but yes, that's generally you only pay taxes on the gains. That's my understanding. Same, yeah. Mm hmm. Coin tracker. Yeah, there's a lot of good sites here, folks. There's um, Joan is saying check out coin market cap, coin tracker. Hang on. So we'll take a look at some of these. Coin Gecko. market. Yeah. Coinmarketcap.com. There is, oops. What is this? What is this? Did I go to the wrong site? There we go. All right, that was that was weird. And uh, what was the other one? There's Coin Market Cap. This is a good site. Um, here's uh, for someone that was asking about NFTs. If you don't know what NFTs are, you can take a look here. Um, they might have some educational content on this site as well, some news, and you can review the different cryptocurrencies. Scott says Coinbase has a report that you can run, not an official form. Okay, thanks, Scott. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. Hey, Fred, you can now buy it back while it's still down because there's no wash sales for <laughs> Coinbase, okay. I'm kind of scared to go buy it back now. <laughs> not sure what's going on with a. <laughs> I'm not a risk taker. <laughs> yeah. Joanne says that Coinbase has a new app that tracks your taxes. And Alan, same. CoinGecko is my go to. It's the best. Yeah. That's the one I was showing you yesterday. The CoinGecko? I'll pull yeah. that site up here. CoinGecko.com. There's another one. And Raymond says Cointracker.io. Is this for the taxes there, Raymond? Yeah, there it is. Track your crypto portfolio and taxes. Okay. Nice. There's some good sites. Awesome. Mike says go buy fake real estate. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> With those NFTs, I know they're. I heard it on the news that you can now buy uh, real estate NFT. I'm like, what is that? Crazy. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's too expensive. I don't know. <laughs> Fred, what is your question on the alerts? Um, Kristen, do you see which alert yeah, we have from on. Fred? Yeah, okay. Um, I saw he said he noticed when he changed the intraday, he noticed that when he did that and he went to the next position and updated automatically. And then here's the alert. Of the, okay, so so he set up a price alert at 100%. I had to manually add 
to each position. Is there an easier way to do this? And will the alerts follow the positions across portfolios and actual actual portfolios and watch lists? So is Fred trying to create intraday alerts? Um, what was the 100 percent that one the price um so he set up a price alert at 100 percent okay for his crypto so you yeah. know let me wait till this pulls up here so here's tezos he went to alerts a price alert 100 percent what do we do 100 percent gain loss um he's i'm asking him gain he said gain okay so when you make a hundred percent gain on the position is that when you're getting out unfortunately there's no easy way to to add the same alert to all of the positions at once like we did with the position tab. Um, so you have to come in here and do this individually for each position. You can't do this in the templates either because the alert templates is based on latest closed prices, not the latest price. Uh, when we go to the My Portfolios and you're on the positions tab and you try to quickly add the same alert again these are based on your alert templates so they're going to be based on latest closed prices and not the intraday prices so unfortunately you'd have to go in here and add the same alert individually to all the positions that you wanted that 100 percent gain alert he said no problem yeah he does that to take a little profit off the table oh good good very good any other questions we did have a question and um i think it's good because i've helped a lot of customers with this so in is it a good idea to add like a tag or no on the actual position to show what exchange or wallet you bought it from i know we have a future request for that but yeah yeah that's a really good uh that's a good suggestion yeah. so with these positions and i can select all of them if i wanted to let me see if i can do the notes here under bulk edit yeah so let me go back and show you so i can select all my positions or i can pick and choose the ones i want to select i don't have to select them all and i can then at the bottom left hit bulk edit and then i can add under notes if I want to add some notes or I can even tag them based on the exchange. So if right. I want to create exchange tags, I can. Um, I have some of these tags already created so I can select them. But if you wanted to create tags, you can also do this from your program settings. So you can go to settings, tags, and this is where I created these tags here below, but I can add uh, the tags Binance, Binance US. So I can create any tag, right? Um, what's another um, Coinbase? I can create my tags like that. So you can tag them that way as well mm -hmm. when you so when you add these tags can you does that automatically put the view you know your view or do you have to go in and edit your views so you have that column where you see it next to um right that's a great question so let's just pretend i don't know which of these could be under coinbase but we'll just pretend okay so now let's go through it um save yes let me go back to that cci 30 I don't really want to review which of these, but let's just pretend, okay, that um, these are, uh, I can trade on Coinbase or any exchange, right, that you're tagging. So I can hit bulk edit. Now under tags, I can search for 
Um, it didn't update it. Oh, hang on. I have to refresh my browser. Okay, let's just pretend that these four can be traded on Coinbase. I'll hit bulk edit. Did I not save it? I was going to say, did you save it? Probably. <laughs> Come on, Marina. <laughs> Get with the program. <laughs> I didn't save it. <laughs> You're not perfect. That's why. Duh. <laughs> Add? Okay, there's a green there's a green save button, <laughs> folks, right at the bottom. Make sure you save it. Okay, it's there, right? You see it, Kristen. It's I see it's it. There. I see it. All right, now let's go back to my portfolios. <laughs> Watch only. Come on, site. Get with the program. <laughs> oh my Someone god. <laughs> this is so slow. I know, mine too. All right, CCI 30. Take it from the top. It doesn't fail. Anytime I'm hosting, it's incredibly slow. All right, so let's go ahead. Again, let's pretend that these four crypto assets are traded on Coinbase Exchange. So I can go bulk edit. And now I can find, there you are, Coinbase, okay? And I can select these. Since I already have it created, I don't have to type it in. I just select it from my list of tag templates, I guess you can say. Now I can hit save. Now, uh, let me just, I want to show you a couple tests. Let me make sure it's not checked. Hang on. All right, so if I type in Coinbase, I have no results, right? Why don't I have the results? Well, I have to have the tag column selected as Kristen was getting at. So. Again, we can open up our position views by selecting this white edit pencil, and we'll select tags. Tags is located under position details continued, the third row, you'll see tags. We'll hit save. And now if I just wanna search based on the cryptos that are traded on a certain exchange, I can type in my exchange and then there they are. Nice. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, so yes, you can. This is a great way to organize your cryptos because, um, you know, we we don't show. There's no position view here that tells you what exchange it's traded on because you know, some of these cryptos can be traded on more than one exchange, right? So, um, but you can tag them based on the exchange, and then you can search for those cryptos that way. I think that's pretty cool. Again, yeah. if you're looking at this after the fact, I don't know if these cryptos are traded on Coinbase, okay? <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> and All what's right. good too is when you set that view, um, that's going to follow to each portfolio if you have multiple crypto portfolios. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you can have multiple portfolios, crypto portfolios. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this goes to Fred's question, does, do the alerts travel with positions in each portfolio or if they're, do you still have to put, so say you have the same um, crypto in one portfolio and you put an alert on there, will that alert travel, stay on that position if it's in another portfolio? No. No. Right. No, Fred, it will not. So remember, if it shows like a, a slash with a zero on the bell, it doesn't have an alert. Just because I set Ethereum up with a, a specific alert doesn't mean that the Ethereum and the other account will have the same alert. Um, let me see if there's a copy. Hang on. No, there's no way to copy an alert either. No, you would have to assign it. You would have to assign it to the, the other crypto uh, and the other portfolio. 
Yeah, and Sandra, going back to tags, you, can you add more than one tag? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, yeah, you can you can like a two for one tag. <laughs> Buy one get one BOGO <laughs> public. <laughs> a combo tag? Yeah, you can do that for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I love what Fred said, and so important because I was I did concierge, and it's he said that to anybody that's confused and dazed, um, <laughs> kind of through the learning curve, um, you know, to definitely take advantage of the concierge service. It saved him from a mm -hmm. breakdown. The staff were like therapists. Oh, yeah. did three sessions. <laughs> <laughs> we do feel like yeah. therapists on concierge. <laughs> it is kind of like a therapy session. You can yeah. vent. You know, mm -hmm. you can if you've got problems, you can vent to our agents. Just don't be too, um, just be gentle, folks. They're they're doing the best they can to help you. <laughs> so yeah. be patient, you know. Um, but yes, they are going to do everything they can to help you. So you can go here, schedule a concierge appointment, and there's no limit, right, on how many you can set up. Um, we are not limiting you. So please uh, come in and join us. Um, you know, on the concierge appointments. We do ask that it you do set it up one appointment at a time. I don't think the site right. even lets you do more than one at a time. So right after you get done with that that appointment, you can come right back in and set up another one. <laughs> yeah, because we keep it we try to keep it to an hour because after an hour it's kind of hard to retain anything. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. So all righty folks, any other questions before we hit the road? <laughs> We good, Kristen? We're good. And Cindy asked, how do we set that up? Um, so you would go to the help button um, and then contact us. Oh, let me move yep. the screen. Hit contact customer success team. Schedule, Schedule a concierge. And go this ahead. is important. You have to do two separate logins because everyone tries to use their Tradesmith login and it will not work. You actually have to register and create a whole entire username and password different. Ah, yes. So hang on. Let me move the webcam out of the way. Our faces are in the way. If you're new <laughs> and have never registered, you hit that register button and it will be separate, as Kristen said, from your Tradesmith Finance account. If you've already booked an appointment, you've already had a concierge, you come here to log in. Um, I don't know what you do if you forgot your password. Is there a, hang on, oh, let's test question. this out. Let me see what happens here if I hit um, login. Oh, there it is. Oh, Look okay. at that, folks. <laughs> That's good. Forgot password. You can hit that forgot password, and um, it just asks you to put in your email. I have reset password, and then right here, you don't have to go anywhere. You can set your password. Exactly, and then you'll get assigned to somebody. You'll have their email, everything. So the person you'll be working with. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. Alrighty, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your help, Kristen. We'll be back on Thursday to join you folks. So I hope you have a good rest of your day. Stay warm, <laughs> go get some lunch if you haven't eaten. <laughs> and we'll see you Thursday. Bye everyone. Bye. Take care. <laughs>